In this video, we are going to be talking about the androgen insensitivity syndrome. The topics we are specifically going to be covering are about sex chromosomes, complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, incomplete, also known as partial androgen insensitivity syndrome, and what my thoughts are on the topic. Now, before we dive straight into talking about AIS, we must first cover some basics. Humans have 23 chromosome pairs, and of the 23, the 23rd pair is our sex chromosomes, which determine whether we are male or female. Males have 1X and 1Y chromosomes, and females have 2X chromosomes. Androgens are hormones that are responsible for the development of male features and reproduction. They are found in both men and women, but women have smaller amounts. The most well-known androgen is testosterone, which is responsible for developing the secondary sex characteristics in men. Secondary sex characteristics are those traits that appear during puberty. Another well-known androgen is dehydrotestosterone, which is also known as DHT. It causes the formation of the penis, scrotum, and prostate. Androgens are responsible for the development of the male testes. They promote the enlargement of skeletal muscles and help build muscle mass. And finally, they can influence the behavior of an individual because some neurons in the brain are sensitive to steroid hormones, such as androgens. They are essentially what makes men act like men. Now you must be wondering what exactly is AIS? Well, it occurs when a person who is genetically male is resistant to androgens, hence the name. The person has the genetic makeup of a man but the physical traits of a woman. Complete androgen insensitivity syndrome occurs when a baby boy is born with female parts and gets mistaken as a female. However, the baby does not have a uterus and is therefore infertile. To break it down a little more, when fetuses start to grow, they all have the physical features of a female. For those that are male, they have testes in their abdomen that descend as they continue to grow, and as a result, they are born with male features. However, in complete AIS, the testes have not descended and remain in the pelvis or abdomen, which is why these genetically male babies are born with female features but no uterus. Complete AIS affects 1 in 20,000 people, which indicates that this is not a very common disease. People with complete AIS are usually raised as female and choose to identify as female. Incomplete AIS occurs when the body's tissues are partially sensitive to the effects of androgens. This is also known as Riefenstein syndrome. People with this form of AIS are born with male sex characteristics but are often infertile and tend to experience breast enlargement at puberty. They can have genitalia that look typically male, genitalia that look typically female, or genitalia that have both male and female traits. These individuals can be raised as either males or females and usually choose to identify as either a male or female. Some common symptoms of AIS would be lacking a uterus, little to no pubic hair, larger breasts, and no menstruation. These symptoms do not appear until the individual has reached puberty, which is why many people don't know that they have this condition until they are like 13, 14 years old. As for treatment, what most people do is get the testes removed because they can become cancerous in the future. And those who choose to identify as female or choose to continue living their life as females would take estrogen pills. I've learned about many diseases that associate with the chromosomes which affect the development of an individual, such as Edwards syndrome or Turner syndrome, but I've never heard about a disease in which a person's sex chromosomes and gender are completely opposite to each other. This is what spiked my interest in the topic. It was specifically that a person's genes say XY, but everything else from birth says XX. Imagine living your life believing that you are a girl, only to find out that genetically you're not. You're actually a boy. Personally, it would cause me to question my own identity because I wouldn't know where I fit in anymore, especially if I have the incomplete form of AIS. I might start to feel different and act different around my friends because I wouldn't know whether to tell them or if they will continue to accept me after I do. But I think that the biggest difficulty I or anyone with this syndrome could face is the choice they are given. The choice to continue living their life as a male or female or anything in between. In today's society, we have a broad spectrum of genders people can associate with, but not everybody accepts the different ranges of the spectrum. This is why society is taking a very long time in providing facilities for people who choose differently, and one of the biggest examples of this are public washrooms. Even though, as a country, we have took some steps towards acceptance for all, people still keep getting told that they have one of two choices, male or female. Society tells people to be different, but then looks down upon those who choose to live outside of the box. I think people should be free to be what they want. Created using Powtoon.